trying to escape from the curses I was born to break. Finding a way to overcome my fears. I am strong enough. There might be some bumpy roads ahead, but I'm equipped. Some great lessons. The power lies in me. Now I see so clearly. All my steps are destined. I'm going in the right direction. Gotta keep believing. To a source that never runs out. I am connected to a love that never runs out. I am connected to a source that never runs out. I am connected to a love that never runs out. I am connected to a source that never runs out. I am connected to a love that never runs out. I have some things to share with you that I've never shared before publicly with anybody. Carlton, you die for what you believe. Jesus is the savior of the world, the whole world, all men. He's affecting the world, the world. He's a pastor that thinks world, and that's what God wants. He did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. If he didn't condemn, why do we? That's all I'm saying. Brother, you ain't just here to have a little meeting. God's called this thing. God's saying, all right, 
I want you to, to walk in the footprints that are already there. And create some new ones. B.E. E. Paul is, is one of my spiritual sons. He's my first expansion consciousness son. When Bishop Pearson transitioned, a lot is on my shoulders now. And I don't perceive myself as the successor of Carlton Pearson. I perceive it as a succession. But there, has, there have to be some voices who can speak and know what he taught and give it and be able to answer the questions. I know that he prepared me for this moment. Well, good evening, everyone. Come on in the room, children, as Bishop would say, get up off that stuva, get somewhere and sit down. If we were eating, he would say, get what you want and get plenty. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am happy to host tonight uh, Bishop Carlton D. Pearson's The Gospel of Inclusion. I'm your host, Bishop uh, D.E. Polk. With the transition of our beloved CDP, there is quite uh, an air of curiosity, uh, even at times some cautious concern. So whether you're all in, uh, in inclusion, or whether you're kind of a Nicodemus that comes by night just wanting to ask some uh, curious questions, you are welcome at this table. The reason that you are welcome is because we are very clear on this, that we are not our current consciousness. We are an eternal capacity. In essence, I am not my beliefs. I'm the spirit capable of having beliefs, exchanging beliefs, changing beliefs, considering beliefs, even clearing out all beliefs and letting the Holy Spirit have its way. Ain't that beautiful? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy 71st birthday. Uh, today would have been uh, our beloved Carlton uh, Demetrius Pearson's 71st birthday. Uh, I spent many birthdays with him, and you might have seen some pictures on social media today. Uh, we celebrated his 70th birthday in Atlanta this time last year, and so we certainly are missing him uh, today and also wanting to honor him. Carlton Pearson delivered us from the religious bondage and baggage of the self-righteous ego. So we've come tonight to honor you, sir. We know that you're only one iteration away. We feel your presence with us. We feel you on the other side of that thinly veiled separation, opening some doors for us and helping us to take this inclusive message into the mainstream. Happy birthday, our beloved Carlton Carly Moses. Demetrius Pearson, we love you, sir. I am wearing tonight. I'm gonna move over to the side so you can see my bow tie. Y'all see that bow tie right there? That is that belonged to Carlton D. Pearson, and that was uh, given to me by his children and uh, by Miss Gina. Thank you for letting me have some of his things. I so appreciate that, and I honor it. We have a lot of people on tonight who are going to celebrate with us. It's going to be an amazing show. We're going to show some clips of Carlton Pearson dancing and singing and having church and being uh, his his comical self, but a lot of his spiritual family, his uh, uh, his children are on tonight. And so we're going to do a little group shot and let everybody kind of say hello tonight. This is kind of our Brady Bunch uh, shot tonight of everybody just waving. There's Reverend uh, Honorable Nicholas O'Rourke, Dr. John, Pastor Mike Williams, Pastor Brandy, Apostle Lakeisha Braggs, Reverend John Scott. Look at Julian Pearson. Mom and dad are in the house tonight. Thank you guys uh, so much for honoring uh, our bishop, uh, our beloved bishop, CDP. We are going to uh, start tonight with a video uh, from Majesty. She was not able to be on live tonight, but sent us a really precious video. This is Carlton uh, Pearson's daughter, uh, Miss Majesty Amore Pearson, and she's got a little birthday uh, gift for us tonight. Happy birthday, Daddy. What a privilege it is. I'm sitting here in one of your favorite spots. In um, gratitude that God sent you to be my dad to have been raised by you, to have watched you make your mark, to be one of the people you <laughs> marked. Um, thank you for your sacrifices. And even when it was scary, even when it was, you weren't sure what was on the other side, you said yes to love. You said yes to humanity's freedom and expansion and growth. And there's, there'll never be another you. And I'm grateful that I can call you father. I love you. Happy birthday from your children, from your spiritual children. Your light is shining on us. 
Thank you, Miss Majesty. Precious, precious words from uh, Bishop CDP's daughter, uh, Miss Majesty, who is a very gifted and talented uh, minister in her own right. Uh, this is the, uh, I believe, one of the premieres of uh, Majesty's new song. It's called Always Be. The first time I heard this, I was in tears. Uh, you can hear Bishop uh, Pearson's voice. If you've seen the movie Lion King, it sounds like Mufasa speaking to Simba. And this is just a little sneak preview. We'll have the whole um, the whole video for next week. But uh, check out Majesty's new song, Honoring Her Father, Bishop Carlton Pearson. This is called Always Be. Everything we desire is already within us. You have the power and the energy to create the life you desire in you. You were the first man that I ever loved. God sent me to you a gift from above. See, there's nothing like a father's love. I'm so thankful to the stars above. God did me to you and you to me. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't have this family. You raised me up and taught me the ways that I should go. And even though you're gone, you promised to never let go. Said you always be the best man that I know. No matter how far that I go, no matter how old that I grow, you know you always be my hero. The best man that I know, no matter how far that I go, no matter how old that I grow, you know you always be my hero. You've always been my hero. You've always been my hero. You've always been my hero. Precious, precious. If you're if you're crying, it's okay. It's a father's love for his daughter and a daughter's love for her father. We'll show you the whole video uh, hopefully next week. Uh, but want to give a shout out to uh, the the co writer of that show, um, O'Malley B, and then to also the producer Brian Jones. Thank you for this beautiful. Um, uh, work of of love, labor of love, to give us a little little reminder of our precious uh, CDP. We have uh, Carlton Pearson's oldest child on with us tonight. Uh, uh, Prince Julian Pearson is on. Julian is such a precious spirit, just authentic and organic and truthful and powerful in his own right. A brilliant thinker. Uh, he has some words he wants to share about his dad. We're going to show. He sent uh, sent us a uh, Netflix promo today from Come, Come Sunday that was just brilli brilliantly done. Uh, Julian posted it on his social media today. So we're going to show that first, and then we're going to come back uh, to Julian Pearson. He's going to say a few words about his dad, and I think he has a little revelation or a reveal for us tonight. Stay tuned. Julian Pearson in just a moment. I see faith compared to the way I had as a child and the way I experienced it and express it today. It's one of the most dangerous virtues that a human being can have because what you believe most, you will experience most. If you believe or have faith in something that is detrimental or violent or harmful or hurtful or hateful, it can be a liability to the human race. Faith is powerful. That's why I always ask this question, what do you believe, why do you believe it, and how do those beliefs add to or subtract from the quality of your life? Everybody has faith. It's not always religious faith, but everybody has faith. Anybody who sits on a chair has faith. They don't even question it. You sit on a picnic bench, a bus stop. So people are always walking in faith. It's not that you have it, it's what do you have faith in? Why do you have that faith? And how is that faith working for you and working for humanity? That's what I consider mature, intelligent, responsible faith. Only CDP can break it down like that. What is faith? Having faith to sit in a chair, then our individual faith, and then our collective faith. How does our faith, uh, our Christian faith, our Hindu, Muslim faith, uh, how does that affect the global consciousness? How are we affecting all of the human 
family. Look at this beautiful person on with us tonight. Julian, so good to see your face, buddy. I love you more than life. Talk to us tonight. Glad you're with us. Hey, everybody. Um, thank you for having me. I don't know why I thought I'd get on here and not cry. That was irresponsible of me. <laughs> but um, we're here. It's uh, March 19th. Um, this will be the five five month anniversary, and um, it's crazy that it's twenty twenty four. Um, four plus four is eight. You know, it's the number of new beginnings, and you know, as we gauge and um, test the waters of what's what, what we have in store, and still learning and growing and trying to deal with certain things um, emotionally and spiritually, and, um, even physically, you know, I, I mean, the people that have been in our lives to kind of go through this um, and push through this, I don't, I don't have the words. It's, it's been absolutely um, an, an absolute outpour of love and support. And mm. um, Dee and Brandy have been there with us every step of the way. Uh, my godfather, Dr. John, a lot of people don't know that that's my godfather, but um, that's my godfather, man. He's, he's, he's been there with us. Um, I mean, there's so many other people I can name, but um, it's just interesting. Timing is, timing is, is, is incredible. I mean, my dad, whew, he, um, he's been a huge rock for so many people, but just us, you know, his kids and my mom and his 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 brothers and sisters like he was the the support the the pillar of um, and, and a huge reflection of love and we all have our disagreements and our little bouts and family quarrels and he's always he's always first of all always been the only one to ever calm me down um, from anything I. I've always been a little hot headed when it comes, especially when it comes to de defending him and my family. Mm -hmm. That's always been uh, a line that you don't cross with me, but he's the only one to be like, you know, relax, chill, look at it like this. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I miss that man so much. I haven't, you know, of course you have your little moments where you cry and get angry and, you know, you don't really know who to blame, but it's not, you know, it's, then I hear him, you know, it's not why I'm, I'm gone. It's, it's why you're still here. Wow. Wow. So, um, just, and then my sister's, you know, my sister's song, it always, that always gets me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I forget the exact lyric, but, um, you gotta keep moving man. you gotta yeah. keep moving. And, um, so uh we're here um we're here i miss my father like no other um yeah man so being being that it you know we're five months in this new space with him and another and another version of him really um the you know we crazy eight, nine months leading up to the actual day. And of course we were there with him to see his last breaths and held his hand. And he really walked us through it yeah. silently. You know, mm -hmm. it's not something that you can walk someone else through um, on, on their deathbed or a transition bed, I should say, or a transition space. But um he went out, he was solid, you know, he, 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 he left us here to, to be who we are and to continue to keep his legacy, um, striving and thriving. And, um, I wish that I have gotten to tell, that I had gotten to tell him certain things, um, before he passed, but, um, leading all the way up until that, it, it, it's it's incredible. The day after, the day after the funeral here, or in Tulsa, I'm in Dallas right now. But the day after 
the morning after the service, Mm -hmm. I found out that I was having a child. And, um, and that, I mean, obviously it blew, blew my mind. I knew that he was pulling some sort of strings or a (laughs) bunch of strings and ropes from the other side, but (laughs) I'm going to have a a, a little girl, man. Wow. Yay. Yeah. It's exciting. It's incredible. I can't even believe it's crazy. The four month anniversary of his passing, I'm literally in the doctor's office looking at my daughter on an ultrasound. So it's just timing is incredible. Um, so, um, Carly Alora is her name. Mm. Carly Alora. Carly Alora. Mm. Carly Alora Rain. <laughs> so that's incredible. And I just, I'm, I'm so happy. Um, my lovely lady Desiree is excited. Mm. Um, my, my mom's excited. Everyone's, everyone's so, so ecstatic. Just the, you know, when, when, when they take one, they send another life and it's just it's beautiful to see so with it being a very bittersweet time that that has been something to kind of keep us all um grounded you know as well as him it's his voice you know it's just beaming so thank you that's that's uh that's uh that's where i am right now and i'm staying strong i'm thriving i'm working and um making things happen on this side while he guides me from the other. So well, we're proud of you, man. We, we sense his, his spirit in you. I don't know if you could see the faces when you made that announcement, but your, your godfather <laughs> yeah, was did. crying. Pastor I Mike know. Williams was crying. <laughs> Brandy's over here trying not to cry. <laughs> I know. It's... Well, we, we welcome uh, your daughter uh, into this space and it's amazing that you found Thank out you. She was on the way as dad was as uh, dad was going out. So and of course I wish yeah. yeah I wish I could tell him, but he he knows yeah. he knew he knows before it happened. So. He knows. It's we're proud of you. We're we're going to spoil your daughter like you would never even imagine. <laughs> so there's no hope. There's no hope for her not to be spoiled. We're going to. Oh, I her. know it. I, uh, it's it's incredible. I'm so excited. Well, thank you, buddy. I know that you've got a busy schedule. I know it's an emotional day for you and the family, but. Thanks for spending this time with us. We love you. And um, we're going love... to keep building this message and this uh, mission together. We appreciate everything you're doing. Big hearts. Love you, buddy. Love you guys. That was uh, Julian Pearson, uh, Bishop Pearson's son, uh, who carries so much of his heart, his compassion. Julian's just a, an amazing presence to be around and made the announcement uh, that his daughter is on the way. So, Bishop CDP, on your 71st birthday, you are a grandpa. And so I know you're looking down on all of us and sending us your love. I did want to give a couple of shouts out to Miss Gina uh, Pearson. We love you, Gina. If you're watching tonight, we are so connected to you and uh, willing to walk through this time of transition and grief with you. Gina has certainly been a stalwart um, in Brandy's in my life as we have taken some things on us and she's been a guide, a help, um, a voice, uh, giving us uh, counsel. Thank you, Gina, for everything that you're doing. I know this is a difficult day for you. And uh, Carlton Pearson's godbrother, Rodney, is on. I've been talking to Rodney this week. Rodney is the son of um, Bishop, when we hear Bishop Pearson talk about godmother, godmother's son, Rodney, and Carlton were raised together. Actually, Rodney sent me a precious picture of him and uh, he and Carlton together uh, as children. And so thank you for being with us tonight, Rodney. All right, we're going to move on. This is uh, a video of Bishop Pearson uh, titled Goodness and Mercy, just a little bit of his, some of his best preaching. And uh, then we're going to hear from uh, Dr. John Destito. I often say if you never meet the devil head on, that's a good sign that you're walking with him. Because the only way for you to meet the devil head on is for both of you to be going in opposite directions. If you never run into him, you go in the same direction he's going in. <laughs> That's what. <laughs> so when you meet adversity, you ought to say, hallelujah. That's a good sign that I'm heading in the right direction. You ought to know about that more than anybody, Brother Roberts. When you meet adversity, that's a good sign that you're heading in the right direction. Say amen. <laughs> and when the devil knocks you back, 
and knocks you down, hits you, he can slap you back a little bit. How many of you know what I'm talking about? But the Bible says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That means the devil can only push you back so far before you bump into goodness and mercy. It's following you all the days of my life. Everybody say, hello, goodness. Hello, mercy. Follow me. I'm going to the valley of the shadow of death. Follow me. I'm going through those difficult times, but I'm not going to run. Wow. Goodness and mercy. Follow me all the days of that was Bishop Pearson, both at Higher Dimensions and then at the Potter's House, uh, Bishop uh, Jake's Church. Um, and so we're thankful for that that footage. I want to welcome uh, to the show tonight uh, Dr. John Destito. He's become one of my closest friends. He is a lifelong best friend of Bishop Carlton Pearson, also his personal physician. If you saw the interview with uh, Bishop George Bloomer, Bloomer asked Carlton Pearson, when you think of friend, who comes to your mind? And without any hesitation, Carlton Pearson said, John Destito, he's my lifelong best friend. Welcome to the show, Dr. John. Yeah, thank you, sir. I, I'm trying not to cry, but uh, <laughs> this is a great day to remember the bishop, the force in all of our lives. I want to start off by thanking Julian, Majesty, and Gina for sharing him with the world. I mean, they actually equipped him to do what he needed to do in the earth, and it and they sacrificed because of it. So I'm so thankful for that. Yeah. Um, I first met Bishop Pearson when I came to Higher Dimensions, and the first words he said to me was, your gifts have made room for you here. And then he said, I want to tell you, Dr. John, that sometimes people don't want your help. They need your time. That was a great lesson for me. And he actually took me on. He said, now you've graduated from med school, but I'll teach you how to be a healer. In the same tradition of Oral Roberts marrying medicine and spirituality, Carlton Pearson invested in me. And every time I had a chance, every time God did a miracle and I was a little part of it, I would remind Bishop Pearson that he poured um, some good efforts into some fertile ground with me. And I'm so thankful for that. I had uh, 30 years of uh, helping people find healing. Um, and I'm, I'm so grateful for that. I was there for the birth of Julian and Majesty. Uh, Carlton was preaching in California at Julian's birth. And I said, uh, I called him and I said, Bishop, I'm not in your fan club. I'm not on your staff. But you need to come back to uh, Tulsa because you're getting ready to have a son. And he said, he, he, this is probably false labor. He can wait. The baby can wait. I'm doing God's work here. I said, let me tell you something. If you don't make this birth, you will never live that down. And so he hired a private jet, got back. He kept came into the room and was telling jokes. And I said, uh -uh, none of that. Your wife's getting ready to have a baby. Within minutes of him arriving, Julian was born. So I was wow. so blessed to be that involved with the church. I want to, uh, and with his family and the ministry. Um, I want to tell one story about the generosity of this man that I try to emulate every day in my life. Some of you heard me tell it. He was preaching in a, in a large church in, in New York City, and they had sent a limo for him, and he preached his heart out like he did always. And on the way home, the limo driver was taking him back to his hotel, and they stopped at a red light. And Carlson looked out of the window, and he saw a homeless man outside. It was freezing cold. It was during the winter time, and he said, told the driver to stop. And he invited this homeless man into his limo, uh, he didn't say, I'm a Christian. What church do you go to? I'm Carlton. He didn't even introduce himself. He just wanted this guy to be warm and to feel loved. And wow. the guy sat with him in the limo, in the warm limo. And Carlton just said, tell me about your life and to about your grandmother and your aunt and your sister, you know, the way he would always do. Uh, just endearing himself to these people and really making them feel like they were the only person mm -hmm in the world. And after he talked with this guy, Carlton emptied out his pocket, 
of all the money he had in his wallet and gave to this guy. And the guy was like, oh man, thank you, thank you, thank you. And you know, that that lesson of generosity, he carried on throughout his whole life. And when he didn't have any money in his wallet, he told me to empty my wallet and I did it every single time <laughs> because I was following this man's great right. uh, teaching. Wow. Um, but the guy left out of his uh, warm limo and went back to the street and he was so happy for a while he'd been warm he'd been loved and there was no proselytizing to him or anything when uh, the limo pulled off it went one block and carlton started crying and told the limo driver to turn back turn back i should have given him my gloves and my coat wow that's wow. the type of christ-likeness that i want to emulate right. to be generous um, there's an economy of earth, which Carlton never lived in, and the economy of heaven. The economy of earth is lack and greed and all of that. The economy of, of heaven is full and abundant, and that's where he lived, and that's where I want to live also. I was, uh, I'll, I'll finish up with this one story. I was able to um, have Carlton stay with me before his wedding. And for a week before his wedding, and it was a great time of fellowship between the two of us, and he was so excited. And I was able to speak to the church after that, and I told them, I said, you know what, I was blessed to have Bishop stay in the house with me before his wedding, but I have to tell you that I'm going to find the church for the pillowcases that he <laughs> left behind, because the activator, Soul Glow, <laughs> scary curl jerry curl i've got a feeling that is not going to be all right and y'all gonna pay for me some new pillowcases so we just left. but i'm i'm so wow. blessed i've learned so much from him we uh de brandy all of us that were in uh, a close relationship we're blessed we're really blessed to understand what covenant relationship is yeah that means I told him the dog may leave you, the dog catcher may leave you, but I'm never leaving you. That's wow. what friends do. And I believed in what he was talking about, too. I believed in the evolution of his thought, and I also evolved. So thank you for having me, D.E. Forgive me for being too tender. I thought I'd gotten all my emotions out earlier, but hearing Julian speak and mm. Majesty sing just brought up a lot of history and memories. Uh, I miss him terribly. I feel his presence. He's visited me in a dream. So I'm so blessed mm. for that. But thank you for letting me join well, you, you today. You don't apologize. Grief grief does not make an appointment. It just shows up yeah. and there's no, there's no right way to grieve. Um, I do yeah. have to say, Dr. John, that his giving spirit is on you. And oh, uh, you, Carlton, Carlton gave everything he had away. I would try to tell him, Maybe hold a little bit back, uh, but he just literally gave everything he had uh, to those yeah. around him. And that that same uh, giving spirit is in you. You were with him Thank until uh, and helping him guide, guide him through his process of death. I don't know if you guys know this, but he would, Bishop Pearson would ask Dr. John, what's it going to feel like to die? Am I going to hurt? Am I going to be in pain? Mm -hmm. And Dr. John said, no, you're going to go to sleep. And Carlton was at peace with it. He taught us how to live. And Carlton Pearson taught us how to die, uh, yeah. dignified death of, of love and joy and giving to others around him. Thank you, Dr. John, for being with us tonight. I want to say one other thing. When I was in the hospital with him one time, we stayed, I, I think I stayed four or five days in the hospital. And he said, you snore. And I said, and you pooped. So <laughs> leave me alone. He said, your snoring is comforting to me. So I loved him and we cut up all the time. That's 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 how family talks, and that's how Carlton Pearson talked. <laughs> Love you, Doctor John. Thanks for being with us tonight. We have, I have a treat for you now. I, I'm actually excited just introducing this. I don't know if you know this, um, but Pastor Mike Williams can dance in the Holy Ghost like nobody's business. I have been waiting for weeks to show everybody this video. This is a, an Azusa clip. Uh, when the Holy Ghost was having its way. And I, before we introduce Pastor Mike Williams, I want you to see him cutting a rug in the Holy Ghost tonight. This is uh, Bishop Pearson's Azusa Conference and Pastor Mike Williams dancing. 
Say, watch. You see that little, the little, what that, my, my little dancing brother. He come out of there dancing. That was God. He was. <laughs> Get it. Let him use you. Let him use you. <laughs> you know, white folks usually just kind of just, just, they just do anything. <laughs> now we got these little charismatic blacks that that's all they know how to do. <laughs> And he got little white boys that come in and step in. Hey! He's turning things around here. He's fooling everybody. He even got the devil fool. I, when I saw that video of Mike William, Pastor Mike Williams dancing, I said, so, Mo folks got to know. Mo folks got to know about this. Unbelievable. Oh, Mike Williams, I want to see, I want to see that dance at Spirit and True Sanctuary at some point. Oh, welcome, to, welcome to the show, Pastor Mike Williams. Thanks for being with us. Thank you so much. It's so great to be here, to be with you, to be with everybody that's on the show tonight. Every, I just love being around you guys. Dr. John, one of the nicest, kindest, sweetest human beings that ever lived. Julian has such a sweet spirit and everyone that's coming along after. It's just, I'm just glad to be in the number. Mike Williams, uh, for those of you who don't know, was uh, Carlton Pearson's associate minister for many years, produced all of the Azusa uh, kind of in charge of getting distributing Bishop Pearson's uh, intellectual properties to the world and uh, was a was a friend to Bishop Carlton Pearson who stuck closer than a brother for many 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 years and uh, it's been a joy to uh, to connect with with you Pastor Mike and uh, honestly been very comforting to brain for Brandy and me to grieve with you we have mm -hmm. told stories and laughed and cried and been to his graveside and and done what Carlton would have wanted us to do just laugh we didn't know how to grieve and so we just told funny stories and I we began to cry thinking he would want to be here right now laughing and telling jokes with us we would uh we would laugh until we cried and then laugh about whatever we were crying about <laughs> <laughs> you know I thought about um what I would say about him today and every time all day long that I open my mouth to just kind of even rehearse what I might say, it would come out instead of words, it came out as tears. Hmm. And it's, it's hard for me to believe that as much crying as we have all done over the last four months that I had any tears left. And after right. today, I thought, well, those are all gone. And then Majesty's song played and Julian talked and Dr. John told his story. And I, I'm just always amazed that there's still another another tear um, for CDP and not, not for CDP, but I think uh, those tears are for us yeah. because we don't have him with us in the same way. Mm. And uh, I had several bishops and pastors and several different ministers call me um, when he got sick, when he passed, after the funeral and i had so many of them say things like thank you for your loyalty thank you for your sacrifice and i never saw a single day over 30 plus years as a day of sacrifice wow. i uh, i felt like the most blessed person mm in the world mm. to be able to be with him to serve him just to be in his presence to me was such a, a great thing that i i never i never took for granted and anytime he would call and say hey i'm running to this i'm running some errands i'm running to the store do you want to ride with me mm -hmm. i might have 10 
things going at, at that very moment. And I would say, of course, I'll be ready in five minutes. Wow. And uh, I just thought about the stories he would tell of him with Oral Roberts and him with Catherine Kuhlman and mm -hmm. Morris Cirillo and different people over the years. And I, and I thought, he's my Oral Roberts. Wow. Yeah. He's my Catherine Kuhlman. Yeah. And then sure. I, and then that led to the thought, oh, that makes me his Carlson Pierce. <laughs> <laughs> but um when uh when so many people left and i've told this story several times including the night before he passed in his room as several of us had gathered maybe a dozen or so and uh really to sing and pray and just praise him into the presence of god is what we were really intending to do and there was such a heavy anointing in the room. I literally thought he would just go in that moment. Mm. Like, and I kept thinking, why wouldn't you just leave now? This is perfect. Mm. <laughs> you know? But um, I felt like when so many people left and he looked at those who were still close. And I felt like he said to us, in a, in a sense, will you go to? Mm. The way Jesus said to his disciples. Right. And I felt like I spoke for us. And I know I spoke for myself when I said, where can I go? Where will we go? You yeah. have the words of eternal word, life. Words of life. Wow. And I still feel like that today. Yeah. Like, why would I leave this now? We've been through all of this. Mm -hmm. He's gone. And I feel an even greater loyalty to him in his death and even in his, than I even felt in his life. And Absolutely. Um, I don't fully understand that yet, but yeah. um, I'm just, uh, I'm just, I'm just so blessed and I'm, I'm so glad we're here tonight and celebrating his birthday. And yes, we celebrate with tears sometimes, um, but it's, it's out of love and, how much we miss him, how much we can't believe he's he's not here. And yet I agree with Malachi, who said before the show started uh, to, to all of us, it, it feels like he never left. Right. And yeah. we keep getting together over things um, in his name and we mm -hmm. create things and do things to wow. honor him in those moments. And it feels like he's the one given the orders. Make this Absolutely. video, do this, have this. <laughs> You're going to need this for uh, Bishop D's consecration. You're going to need to do that. <laughs> and so it feels like he's not gone at all in ma yeah. many ways. And yet uh, he has not called me to tell me that he had greens and potato salad. Come on over. <laughs> so. Well, thank you, just, thank Pastor you. Mike, the, the effort that you give. Some of you may not know this, but. The promos that you see, the opening videos, um, the, the clips that you see, all of that is coming from uh, the, the talent, the, the effort, and the love of Pastor Mike Williams, who is committed, as Brandy and I are, to carrying this legacy, uh, carrying this, this message, this mandate, this ministry, this mission uh, into the mainstream. And so, Mike, thank you for what you're, what you're doing next um, month. Uh, Pastor Mike Williams will be uh, ordained into the International Communion of Expanding Consciousness, and we'll continue to do this work uh, in the name and in the nature of Carlton D. Pearson. And so, Mike, thank you so much. I'm going to show a clip. This is of Mike, uh, Pastor Mike Williams speaking, really speaking from his heart um, at uh, Larry Reed's event honoring Bishop Carlton Pearson. And uh, there's a phrase in here that I'm going to come back to. Uh, that I think really just resonated with my heart. See if you pick up on it right here. This is Pastor Mike Williams uh, at Carlton Pearson's uh, Home Going. When so many people walked away from him, I was a young minister. I'd made a lot of connections through Azusa, but I stayed. I stayed because I loved him that much. Number two, I believed in the message, but mostly sitting at his table, 
meant more to me than standing on his platform. Mm. Thank you. Wow. I have to say that is true. That's true of Pastor Mike Williams. Um, he, he is a brother, a friend who loves at all times. Sitting at his table meant more to me than standing on his platform. Some people came to CDP to be promoted. Some came to find, uh, to uh, magnify their name in some ways. Uh, but the heart of Mike Williams, Pastor Mike Williams, was to walk with him, to work, work with him, work for him and uh, to serve him in any capacity that he could and is still and in his absence mike williams is still doing that as well to this point we've put a lot of sweat equity into uh this gospel of inclusion show i don't think mike williams has been paid yet and so that'll tell you the heart of this man wanting to make uh, uh keep this message alive uh if you have a minute uh, take a moment to like and subscribe we want to make sure that you're getting uh, reminders when we go live this is the way that we keep the legacy of carlton pearson alive and so get a chance to like and subscribe i want to introduce to you one of uh, bishop pearson's sons of inclusion uh, he actually performed the wedding for this uh young both preacher politician world changer uh in, in my time with Carlton Pearson, when I met uh, the Reverend Honorable Nicholas O'Rourke, I immediately knew the hand of God was on this man's life. He was very young at that time, still, still a young man, uh, but just so eloquent and brilliant and specifically um, gifted to speak and give this message in both a palatable and powerful way. And so I asked him to come on tonight. This is one of Carlton Pearson's first sons of the inclusive message. Look at my brother from another mother, Reverend Nicholas. Welcome to the show tonight. Bishop Paul, I'm grateful to be on here with you and to be with all of our siblings uh, yeah. as we remember and celebrate the life of a contemporary reformer, uh, the late, great, most Reverend Carlton Demetrius Pearson. It's grateful to be with you. You are. Uh, you walked with him for a long time. I know it's. We weren't. Neither one of us were all that close to him during Azusa, but we are definitely his sons of inclusion. Uh, when the inclusive message came out, you were. You had the Peter spirit. You would draw that sword and say, "Hold on, now you can. You can disagree, but don't you respect my dad like that?" And um, I love that fire in you, the brilliance, your apologetic nature, uh, to be able to make the message plain and. Um, uh, I so appreciate what you're doing, uh, making changes uh, both in uh, in the church world and affecting change uh, in uh, in government. Uh, he is so proud of you. I, I remember when I was with him, one of the last times I stood in his driveway and you and I talked on the phone, and I'm trying not to get emotional saying this, but you said, tell me the real deal, DE. I need to know the real deal. And I said, he's, he's going to die pretty soon. And I heard your voice crack. And I felt the love through the phone that you felt for, for your spiritual father. Yeah. So say to us whatever you want, man. This is this is your time to share your heart. We love you. We love you, Reverend Nicholas. Yeah, yeah. Carlton D. Pearson, CDP, he gave us so much. So much. That's that was the overflow that I felt um as I was coming to terms with his imminent transition. And when it ultimately happened, you know, once it kind of like really hit me, you know, as much as there's deep ache in the sadness, there was a deep appreciation for just how much he gave us. And maybe that's selfish, but 20, 30, 40, 50 years pouring out for the world and even when the world rejected him, he kept pouring. And, you know, Dr. John talked about him being one of the most generous people ever. That and some, as we all know, right? You know, hard to find a human being like him, let alone a man or a minister. Um, and to be that close to someone, to to be loved, welcomed, embraced, tutored, uh, really, um, in my own young journey from someone who was a giant in the way that he was and is, 
also made me realize just how much all of us who are his offspring or are of his lineage now, um, how much he prepared us all hmm. for the times within which we live. Yeah. Um, I feel particularly primed and ready as we're witnessing everything that's going on. Because if there's anything to be said about Carlton Demetrius Pearson is that he lived it. It wasn't facade. He was the real deal. Um, it wasn't even that he fell out of grace, as many people often talked about it. He fell into grace and out of legalism, and he showed as much and said as much. Um, I remember uh, after not too long after having that conversation with you, um, I ended up sending him a, a message. Actually, no, I'm thinking about the wrong one. There was a message that I sent a few months before that. Um, I realized things were shifting as those messages started to slow down. And I happened to be reading through a commentary um, in Acts and I screenshot it, uh, a piece of it. I took a picture of it and texted it to him and said, this is what it said. It said, um, the Pentecost pre uh, presentation of Acts 2 was, this import was thus important in the African-American religious tradition because it supplied a basis for the black church to argue for inclusive and just practices within the church and American society. And just sent it to him because he was the first person that came to mind when I thought about the ways that Pentecost became a portal for inclusion in its Genesis days. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, I said, seems like coming and going, you've remained true to and advanced the de democratizing inclusive spirit on many levels. You said these things before, but just passing it in the commentary and reminds me to thank you for your example and your friendship, to which he says back to me. Thanks, my friend. Love being a change agent, encouraging all to embrace their own personal growth and evolution. Hmm. And, you know, again, this is what I mean be, to be able to be close to someone who really did architect a whole new way of being and doing church as we know it and kept doing that all the way through until. Um, uh, I, I remember you, you made a passing comment about, you know, having that Peter spirit when I, when I feel like he adopted me into, um, his spiritual family. Uh, and that, that's true because I think part of what drew me to him was my own anger at the church. Um, my own frustrations and, you know, stomach kind of turning with, um, what he termed in his book, the Christianity Incorporated. Mm -hmm. See, what CDP was, was saying and talking about was way more than wordplay. He called out a system. Yeah. That was how powerful he was. He wasn't just mm -hmm. talking mess. He was calling out a system. And it was actually a system that he helped create. Yeah. Yep. He spent the balance of his life mm -hmm. helping to dismantle that system and to denounce it for the idol that it had become in the minds of far too many and at the expense of way too many more. And in that way, he was a revolutionary. And, and folks have said that we I mentioned earlier, most began to accept and recognize and we collectively as siblings. And thank you, Bishop, for your organizing of it as well. Called him for what he really was, a reformer, a modern day reformer. Yep. Um, and not that that he only called out the church, but also in the new dimension, he helped many discover with each other, with each with ourselves and amongst each other, multiracial, uniclass societies that must exist internally. He helped us to kind of imagine these things, to see these things internally, to believe in these things before we would ever realize it externally. I remember him yeah. uh, quoting our Buck Buckminster Fuller and it stuck with me. He says, you never change the things um, by fighting the existing reality. He said to change something, you have to build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. Wow. And for Carlton Pearson to be the kind of person to not only dismantle a system that he helped build, right? but also to architect something else new mm. is amazing. Mm. I think he recognized, and I'll say this in conclusion, I think he recognized with the church, with what he called Christian Incorporated, that a society that's ruled by the marketplace cannot accommodate the need to be whole, mm. our human need to be whole. A, a, a model where, where that which is supposed to be spirit is, is driven by, by growth and, 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 and budgets it, it can't satiate the soul. Mm -hmm. Pearson taught us to work at the level of our soul and our self's need for self-actualization. And that saved my life. Yeah. Yeah. 
What will a man give in exchange for his soul? Yeah. How many, how many times did he ask us as his sons that question? And he, of course, would break it down linguistically. The soul is not the eternal state, but the soul, it comes from the Greek word suke, which means psyche. What will a man give in exchange for his mind? Will you, will you reserve the truth that is within you for offerings and tithes? As, as a Reverend Nicholas was so eloquently uh, describing to us not only the shift uh, in theology, but the shift in methodology and cosmology that, that Bishop Pearson brought to us. And he left us well prepared as you hear uh, this brilliant voice, uh, Reverend Honorable Nicholas O'Rourke speak to us. You know that inclusion is in good hands. And this is my, my sibling. I have to admit, Brandy and I sometimes lie in bed at night and we, uh, we look at your uh, social media pages and you're in uh, uh, ga political gatherings and protesting or speaking truth to power, or passing legislation. And we just feel, I know that we're not your parents, but we go, look, look, look what he's doing. Look at him. Go get him. Go get him. And so there's always, there's always a room available at my house. You know that you're family to me. And uh, we thank you for being on tonight. We love you, buddy. Thank you, Nicholas, for being on tonight. Our uh, next voice you will hear is one of Bishop Pearson's favorite daughters, and uh, he certainly was a father to her. I witnessed it firsthand. There's no one that could encourage, that can affirm, that could um, uh, that could lift up and build up like Carlton Pearson. Uh, when Brain and I were driving back from, I was speaking at a church in Greensboro, North Carolina. Hello, Apostle, Apostle Wayne Clapp. Um, and we got the news from, uh, from Miss Gina that, uh, Bishop Pearson had died at Brandy immediately. We're riding in the car. She immediately started putting together the graphics. We put together the slogans, all that, that you saw, uh, during his homegoing ceremonies, whether it was at Transformation Church, um, whether it was at Larry Reed's event, we, Brandy and I put all that together in the car. Really, she put it together. And when she finished putting it together, I said to her, you know, when he's, when Bishop Pearson would have seen what you did, he would have said, you're so smart. You're so amazing. And we both cried knowing that uh, that voice of encouragement would come from a spiritual realm, not necessarily a physical realm anymore. And so I want to introduce to you uh, my wife, uh, Pastor Brandy Pauk, the daughter of Bishop Carlton D. Pearson. Well, thank you. I don't know if I can really take all the credit for that. It's almost true what you shared. I, we were responsible for the wording and part of the graphics, but um, we played a special part in that and it was my great joy. And I will say I was thinking today, Mike, you kind of stole the words out of, out of my, my mouth from earlier. I was reflecting in some of my time today on what I would want to share. And uh, I just I couldn't quite find the words. I didn't cry all that much today, but as soon as we all got on and um, I kind of can't help but to mama everybody, if that's a fair way to say it, because DE shared one time my relationship with Bishop Pearson was kind of interesting that he, yes, he was a father and he was a papa, but in some ways I was very protective over him in a maternal way, I, I guess is, is the way to say it. So I kind of mothered him as well. And we were all defenders of, of our bishop, uh, so we I'm sure we all understand we would jump in there to protect him, but I felt very protective over him for many, many, many years. Mm. And so, you know, I was thinking, though, if I wanted to share one thing, the, the balloons that Majesty got today for her video just really were moving to me, and it might seem like a simple thing, but that was and something intentional that she did today to put together her words, she went, she bought those balloons. That is, Those are the acts that we sometimes do for each other, whether it's mm -hmm. the, the things we give each other to show and celebrate someone. And we all know if, if, if Bishop was here with us tonight, just like he was this time last year, we would get him a cake, we would get him some balloons, we might get him a car, we might do all the things and we would celebrate him because that's what we wanted to do was celebrate him. And I was thinking he would enjoy that, but if, if he were here tonight, I think he would want to make sure that we celebrate ourselves yeah. and we celebrate each other. And he was always telling, even in some of the words tonight, for you to find you and love you and appreciate you. Even he said, I lost it all to find everything. I found me. Found me. And so in his absence, mm -hmm. 
I miss him, but I'm just looking for me a little bit harder today. So I wanted to say that. And I also, there were a few comments tonight that are coming through that I just wanted to share. Someone said something simply, you know, may I be, be just a fraction of a father. And I was thinking, yes, may we all be just the fraction of the father, the man, mm -hmm. the human, the Christian, the mystic, the healer, mm -hmm. the peacemaker, the peacekeeper that our bishop was. May we just be a fraction and we're doing pretty good because he sure was a, a tall order to follow. Wow. But um, there's also more people finding him now. And there's someone on tonight. I'm sorry if I miss, missed it said, look, I just Bishop Pearson has just come into my life. I've just learned of him. Mm -hmm. And then I found on Wikipedia, he passed away in November. And so, wow. you know, our work is not done. Mike said, mm -hmm. we feel more of, you know, the mandate now in his absence. And so we all know that he left us all with each other in the famous words. I will always quote Will Bogle, his wonderful friend and agent. He left us prepared and with each other. I love you all. Love yourself today. Bishop CDP would want us to, yes, celebrate him, but to also celebrate each other and to celebrate ourselves on his birthday. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, uh, Pastor Brandy, for that. Uh, I, I'll share a quick story. It won't be long, but I was in the car riding with CDP one day, and I said, I just want to tell you thank you for being so real and so beautiful and wonderful. Um, I love the time I spend with you. I just honor you. And he said, you know, DE, you really don't love me. And I said, what? What do you mean? I do love you. I care for you. He said, no, I know you care for me. He said, but what you're experiencing now is not love for me. You love the part of yourself that you experience when you're with me. And I had, I was all hurt, had my feelings hurt. And the next day I thought, yeah, that makes sense. He's right about that. Uh, just this week, I've been on uh, both Zoom sessions and in person with pastors from Nigeria, today with a pastor from Tanzania, uh, Hispanic-speaking churches. Inclusion is making its way into the globe. They are wanting to help help me strategize with them how to begin inclusive churches. I'm writing a book right now, How to Survive the Shift, How to Become an Inclusive Church and Still Not Lose Your Shirt. As shift happens, can you keep your shirt? And so look at all this wealth. Look at all this legacy that he leaves to us. We're going to do this thing together. As Bishop Pearson would say, we got this. And we will make sure that inclusion continues on in the next generation. This is a video uh, that uh, we uh, called Everything's Going to Be All Right. I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. This video will lead us into talking to mom and dad and LaDonna, who loved Carlton Pearson as their family. Say what we love to say around here all the time. Jesus is. Jesus. The best, the best thing that ever happened to me. Happened to Look me. at somebody saying, he is by far, is by far the best thing best that can, can or ever will, will happen, to happen to you. And guess what? Yes. Guess what? Yes. The best yes. is yes. yet yes. to
they say is true. But if they knew what we were rolling about, they'd be rolling too. Yeah. We're acting like this because we got this strange, sneaky feeling that it's going to be all right. Fond memories of seeing that tambourine. Did you guys see Bishop Pearson's hair in that video? <laughs> he was working that hair. One thing that uh, you might notice about that video is how many white faces were in his building. Uh, Bishop Pearson had the ability to cross cultural lines and uh, cultural barriers. He was just a, he was a person who appealed to everybody. Everybody loved him. And so I've got a lot of his white family here gathered with me today. I've got my my two children and and our new addition to our group. Come on in, guys, if you will. Sydney and Micah and Esther and Wade. We wanted to show everybody, say happy birthday to to everybody out there. These are my these are my peoples. And then my parents on as well with my sister. And uh, strangely enough, uh, Bishop Pearson's birthday today, November, uh, sorry, March the 19th, uh, is actually uh, Sydney, who's a, who's a new part of our family. It's her birthday. And so when she said, she said, my birthday's March 19th, I said, you're joking me. She said, mm. I said, well, you're the reincarnation <laughs> of Carlton Pearson has shown back up in our house as a blonde headed white girl. So <laughs> thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. Papa and Nana, thank you for joining us. Carlton Pearson was beloved uh, by my parents. Um, he was, I don't know if he was young enough to be their son, but they certainly adopted him as their son. He stayed in their home with them many times and um, loved them dearly. Thanks, uh, Papa and Nana, for being on tonight. Talk to us. Well, I just want to say happy birthday, happy heavenly birthday. A year ago today, on his 70th birthday, I got to be with him at Hillside International Truth Center, and I played a happy birthday uh, piano solo to him made up of classical music, rock music, jazz, gospel, everything, because he loved variety, and, and we so enjoyed that. Uh, Carlton Pearson came to us in 1978 the first time, and that was the first of actually hundreds of times that he spoke at our church. Uh, when Bishop Polk uh, had surgery and was so ill in 2006, Carlton was with us nearly twice a month for two years. And uh, we're so appreciative of everything that he did. Uh, when, when I think of the honors and the things that people don't even know about him, but the only Pentecostal man that we know who Car Harvard University asked for all his uh -huh. sermons, his music, his awards, everything that he said and believed, it's amazing. And uh, I just am so grateful that they let me, it, one of my great honors was to get to play at both of his services in Tulsa and then at our church. And uh, we're going to, on April the 11th, he's going to be inducted into the Martin Luther King Jr. Heart, uh, Portrait Hall of Fame at Morehouse College. And that's going to be an absolutely great day. I, I, we could go on forever about Carlton Pearson. He was the kindest, most intelligent, most encouraging, wonderful man. And I think the biggest honor that he ever gave to me was when he asked me, he said, I love my mother. I put her to bed every night. He said, but would you be my second mother? And that was such an honor. And I love you, Carlton. And I want you to know, we've all cried for a month and a year now, but grief comes in waves. And every time a grave, a wave, new wave comes of grief and tries to knock you down, just think of the wonderful things he did and the wonderful things that are happening today yes. because he transitioned. If you can see on my bookshelf here, that's the that's the a small picture 
of the portrait uh, that will be hung in a very conspicuous place in the in the historic international uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Chapel at Morehouse College, and so. Uh, also, the proclamation that we wrote about him as a church reformer, that his sons, his spiritual sons and daughters wrote about him, will be standing there uh, for all to see for generations to come. And so very, very proud uh, of Morehouse College's and Harvard University's uh, honoring of this incredible spirit that we got to know as Carlton Pearson. You want to say something, Dad? Yes. Uh old people sometimes the thing that they have that's so important to them are memories. There's an old song that there's a phrase and it says, precious memories, how they linger, how they ever touch my soul. Anyway, I'm remembering tonight, I'm sitting in our dining room, only a couple <clears throat> of chairs away uh, at our table where Carlton sat when he was here. On Many the times. other side, is about four or five feet is the bedroom that he always occupied when he was here. And I remember uh, back in June, I turned 85, and uh, they called Carlton and asked him if he would send a video. He said, no, I won't send a video. I will come myself. I want to be a part yeah. of the celebration. So he came. And I've told this story before, but it's my last memory of him in person. As he came to this very room, had lunch with us, and then... He had to leave, and we walked out to the driveway, and he took me in his arms, and I could feel his body shaking, and I, I realized he was sobbing. And he said, you know, he said, at our age, we never know when it's going to be the last time we see uh, each other. And I think he probably was thinking about at my age, and I have some physical impairments, that he was thinking it might be the last time he saw me. But it happened to be the last time that we saw him. So on this on this special day of his <clears> birthday, <throat> so many memories, and we love him. He came here 1978, yes, which is 46, 46 years. years ago, and he's been uh, like a son to us across those years. And uh, he'd be close; we'd be close to be able to be his parents. We've been married. 63 years mm. and uh, he's been a part of our life for so many of those years so on his birthday we just love along with you and all of his other family and friends to stop and say we love carlton pierce let me say for Ladonna, who's not going to be on the program tonight but about the year 2000, maybe 1999, when Carlton first started believing that there wasn't a torturous burning place called hell and some of the other inclusive, wonderful things that he taught us, the first person of, of our family that he really talked to was LaDonna. Mm -hmm. and, and it was all so strange to us, but she was yeah. absolutely, totally convinced. And she has so much discernment. And all of the rest of us just fell right in. I mean, it was just so natural. A God of love, not a God of hate, not a God to fear. Well, Carlton Pearson enjoyed his talks with us and especially uh, <clears throat> dad. He loved to talk to you because he knew that you had been believing this way for many years. Uh, dad would say to him often, Carlton would say, Don, do you, do you believe what I'm teaching? And he said, no, Carlton, I'm glad you finally caught up to what I believed all these years. <laughs> and so he was right at home uh, mm -hmm. with us open-minded thinkers. I did want to say, um, Dr. John DeStito said earlier, uh, thanking Majesty and Julian and Gina for sharing their, uh, their dad and their husband with the world. I want to say to you as my parents, thank you for sharing me with Carlton Pearson. Mm -hmm. He became a mentor in my life, and you never begrudge the time that he and I spent together. It was time well. It was time well invested, and thank you for sharing your only son <laughs> with Carlton Pearson and, and as much time as I spent with him. He loved you guys dearly, and uh, I do as well. Thanks, mom and dad, for being on tonight. We're going to introduce uh, to you now uh, one of Carlton Pearson's daughters in the faith. Uh, she not only uh, considers herself uh, uh, a, a spiritual daughter of Carlton Pearson, but she is doing the work. 
Uh, I got a chance to connect with her just a few weeks ago, and she has an inclusive ministry, is teaching the ideas of inclusivity, is manifesting inclusion as her as her methodological approach to ministry. I know that he is so proud of what you are doing. Welcome to the show tonight, Apostle Lakeisha Braggs. Hello, hello, hello. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor. My new pastor. I've t- been telling everybody I got a new bishop now. Mm. Um, first of all, happy, happy birthday. We call Bishop Uncle Carlton. Let me just say that. I am the daughter of the late Dr. Ellie Braggs. Him and my father, Bishop Pearson and my father, I'm going to say we're like brothers um, from another mother. I watched... Um, them bond, have such a tight bond. And then over the years, he gotten married and he introduced us to his new wife, brought her into the home of us, uh, introduced us to the children over time. I'm going to speed it up because I know we don't have a lot of time. And we all connected in ministry. Um, And when I tell you, it was such a beautiful connection because I've never met a man like my father. My father transitioned a year ago and Bishop Pearson actually did his eulogy. Mm -hmm. I did not know that he was going to transition a year later. Mm -hmm. I had to step up into ministry when my dad took sick, um, but giving, giving honor to him as well. And my mom, she transitioned a year before my father. But now me having to carry on the legacy of inclusion and be, I call my, they call me the hood pastor. Our church is in the neighborhood, in the hood. And and I'm trying to keep the legacy going. Um, And in dad's transition, Carton Pearson had been there for me. It was like, he stepped up when my dad passed and it's like, okay, I have somebody, I have a covering now, somebody that's going to help me uh, understand this new, this new world, this new earth. um, Because I, I was still learning. My dad said, I'm going to um, teach you how to teach the people how to swim. I'm going to take you into the deep and I will leave you here to teach them how to swim. Well, I didn't know that I was going to be left by myself. Long story short, after the funeral, the ride home in the car from the church in the, the family car, Bishop Pearson was two rows behind me. He didn't waste no time, y'all immediately got in the car and said, what are you, you going to do? Mm. What are you going to do with the building? And I'm sitting up trying to really gather myself. Like, I don't really know what to say because now I'm, I, I've been co-pastor, but now my dad is transitioned. Now I'm senior pastor. I'm 45 years old and a young woman who has a past that isn't pretty, but I had, I knew that I was different and he cultivated that and took me up under his wings and was like, well, your dad told you church as usual will be no more. So get yourself ready, get your skin ready because now it's time for you to stand up and carry the legacy. Well, when Pastor Pearson transitioned three days for maybe four days before he actually transitioned, I had the opportunity to go and visit him. When I got there, I said, God, I need you to Make me understand where I am and, and I want to make sure I'm where I'm supposed to be because I want I want to do so much, but it's a box that people are trying to keep me in. When I stood over the bed and talked to him, he looked up at me and he the first thing he said, you know, I'm in there trying to be a little emotional, but he was checking out my outfit. You go, girl. You know, and I was telling him about some things that I wanted to do in ministry, even with the LGBTQ community. Mm-hmm. I was nervous about telling him. And the response that he gave me and the feeling that I had was almost like, okay, in his last days of transition, he's actually given me the stamp of approval to keep going. Don't get caught up. My dad divorced religion Mm -hmm. and he married awareness. And I love love the fact, no, I just, and I, I, I needed continuous support. And when Auntie Gina told me, she said, you need to talk to Bishop, Bishop Polk. And I said, well, I haven't met him yet. So when I, when I was able to meet you, even though it was a sad occasion, I thank God for him even giving my dad one, a platform years ago in Azusa, now using you to give me 
the opportunity to speak on his behalf because all souls are mine. We are not, we may not talk the same. We may not look like everybody else, but you know what? All souls are mine and we all belong in the kingdom. And I'm not here to build a building, Pastor Bishop. Mm. I'm here to build mm. people. So I love Pastor Pearson for leaving us with this gospel of inclusion. I'm excited about learning even more, connecting with you, getting into my studies even more, coming in, trying to see what I can do to continue to push the legacy. And also being a preacher's kid, let me say this, it's hard. It, it hadn't been easy, yeah. but I, I, I cover majesty. I cover um, Julian because it's it's hard when you're when you have a father as big as that, a giant mm -hmm. as such, and to have to lose him, but not lose him. Because wow. everywhere he is, every time we, we, we think about him, every time we, we say his name, they're, they're with us. So we, we appreciate the great cloud of witnesses. I, 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 I admonish them and I, I'm covering them. I love the whole entire family. Thank you so much for even giving the, the Awareness Center. By the way, the name of my ministry is the Awareness Center International mm -hmm. Diversity Institute, New Generation. So we're New G and we're here to push uh, inclus inclusion. Um, I love Pastor Pearson. Happy, happy 71st birthday. We will make you proud. We won't stop. We're going to keep fighting with one hand and building with the next. I love you and thank you for the opportunity. Ooh, I feel some Holy Ghost moving around. I had a, I had a chill bump. My goodness. Divorce, oh. religion, and married awareness. The, the church, can you say amen to that? That was a good word right there. I left, uh, I left Apostle uh, Gina texted me last week and said, Apostle Braggs wants to connect with you. She's looking for covering. So I called her within five minutes mm -hmm. and I left a long Carlton Pearson style voicemail that was nonsense and <laughs> love and yeah. and all of that. Immediately she was like, This white dude is crazy, just like Carlton. Yeah. <laughs> I want him. That's what I uh, <laughs> well, well, we're going to walk together. You are bold. You are beautiful. You are brave. You are brilliant. And you are unapologetically. Uh, architecting inclusion. We're going to walk this thing out together, girl. We got this. We got this together. He left us prepared and he left us together. Church, I, I know that she, she can't hear you, but you ought to put those hands together and thank God tonight for the word from Apostle Lakeisha Braggs. Thank you for your uh, contribution tonight. Apostle, we'll be in touch very soon. Thanks for your time. All right, I'm going to uh, bring to the show someone who uh, talk about sweat equity and time and uh, effort and just a just a heart made of gold uh, who really uh, was uh, both a, a promoting of Bishop Pearson uh, and was patient with his quirkiness because you know our Bishop he didn't know technology but well I don't either I'm I'm terrible with technology but if you get us if you get us off of the tarmac we can fly pretty good um, but uh, Malachi Gross is an incredible spirit. Um, if you meet him, even as he embraces you physically, you just feel the presence of God's love, of expanded consciousness, which is his uh, his call uh, to to, uh, to the earth and universe in this season. He produced this show um, free of charge for Bishop Pearson for many years, and so I had to have uh, Malachi on tonight. He agreed to come on. Welcome to the show, my brother. I appreciate everything you're doing. Talk to us, you expanded consciousness man. Greetings. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you can hear me, correct? We can hear you. Yeah. All right. I have to do that just because, you know, you can't hear Bishop and Instagram is messing up, you know, when they can't hear him. So, you know, now it's now it's on me. But thank you for this moment and this time. I, I do remember and reflect so many times of celebrating Bishop. And I re even remember the last time that we celebrated and um, it was special last the last December, um, last March. It was special. And honestly, there was moments and times that it just something seemed right, but didn't seem right. We we're all gathered around um, the piano and we were singing. If you go look on his channel and you look at his past video, you'll see. But I know today as we gather to commemorate his birthday. Bishop Carlton, I'm reminded of the profound impact and the moments that all of us have had. You know, it was just a year ago. I remember when just the visions and the things that I had and me and Bishop would talk about expanded consciousness, which it expanding and expanding consciousness includes inclusion. And I was doing some other work later 
because as I continue with some of this work and I j- and it was like where Bishop is, it's already expanded, right? Mm-hmm. We are just catching up to it, right? Or we're mm-hmm. coming into this new iteration or understanding. And I know, man, Carlton, he just had this remarkable ability to delve and go into subjects and topics. I mean, he could talk about some pizza being made and you would be flabbergasted with the way he had a way of words. But I'll tell you, in the final days, Carlton really imparted us with a mission. And that's what I really wanted people to really know as we look at this moment, this time, as I continue and carry on, as other individuals carry on, I want people to know his unwavering dedication. He did that. He, he did this for 15 years doing this. And it give and basically I would say it, it gifted, gifted us with the ability and he navigated through the complex complexities of life and various different things that most of us could not really think or imagine of doing all the way up until his last moments. And he was so totally 100% fine with his last moments. I've never witnessed someone so comfortable, someone that is so understanding, someone that is so connected to understanding what this all means. And he was actually tired. And I understand. And, you know, now that we're in this year and I think about Bishop and I think about what we would have to, what he would have to experience right now as he would have to go through a 2024 and Donald Trump is going to be going for presidency. (laughs) So we know, (laughs) we, uh, I know that what we would be dealing with, (laughs) with, with Bishop and and on on it. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> there's so, so many times that we would have fun we would laugh and in and, and ultimately de what i would really want people to know and to understand is that many people have got to this moment and we're getting to this moment of of inclusion and understanding what this means you're building and you're doing this thing through inclusion. And what I want a lot of people to know and to get, and I talk to a lot of people that are brilliant people, people that have been following Bishop. And I just want to let everyone know as we honor Bishop and the way you honor Bishop is by speaking your truth, be embodied with the boldness that he exemplified and continue on the journey and barking upon us. Right. (laughs) And, and just know that, I promise you, the more you put into this, the more you put into your own soul, more you put into more of your own pushing what you have inside of you out. The biggest thing that Bishop would ever do is in he would empower people to to do something and to move and to be and to become 100 percent. That's that was his his biggest thing. And on his birthday, every time I believe we would see or experience his birthday those who had their privilege with experiencing bishop in a in the flesh and some people have it just now coming to know or understand who bishop is the biggest thing i'll tell you is the collective consciousness as we come together and as we broadcast this signal you could barely type something in and a lot of these people are putting out videos all sorts of different videos, whether it's be about Bishop or something about Christianity, that is just their version. Yeah. Be encouraged to, to, to push out some good messages, be encouraged to fill this collective consciousness with um, words from Bishop and also your own discovery. Bishop was really, really big with he, that one thing he enjoyed more than anything was when he's able to see the works and able to see other people he would be more than proud of you de how this transition happened and you being able to take this platform the carlton pearson platform and be able to grow it build it in in a way own it uh because that's what bishop would want you know he he said i'm done down here i remember he literally in the hospice he said i'm done down here (laughs) so y'all do what y'all gonna do Mm -hmm. Because I'm good. Yeah. I'm okay. 
right? It's so, I believe it's beautiful. It's an honor and privilege 100% to experience this, but I don't just consider it an honor and privilege. I also understand that it is a responsibility, yep. right? To, for us to, especially those who have been connected or been some kind of imparted into those who have had the, the, the time, you know, spent with a person to take what's inside of you, take what's inside of your heart, take what's inside of you and your abilities and make sure that you are pushing and doing and becoming your 100% self, your authentic divine self. So it's an honor and privilege. I thank you so much, DE, for this moment in time and for those who are listening. Thank you, uh, Malika, for the work that you're doing. You know, it's, you, you, you kind of introduced us to body life just now, and that is uh, you you have a, a gifting toward expanded consciousness, and you have that gifting of, of CDP in you to call out the best in others. That was his gift, is to see as an apostle. He saw the gift in others, and he wanted to develop it. That's That yes. certainly is resting on you. It's who you are. And um, I, you had Jay Baker on your show um, a couple of months ago, and Jay was so funny. He said, I called to encourage Bishop Pearson as he was dying. And he spent 30 minutes encouraging me. He taught us how to live. He taught us how to die. And he would ask us, how you doing? How are you dying? Is what he's actually, actually was saying. So we will keep working this thing together. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you for all the labor uh, of love that you've put into this. And if you're, if you're listening tonight, um, Malachi Gross is uh, part of the spiritual progeny and legacy of uh, Bishop Carlton D. Pearson. And so we're going to hold hands and yes. uh, and carry this legacy for Thank you for your time tonight, Malachi. We appreciate you. Yes. Bless you, sir. All right. This is uh, a video of uh, Bishop Pearson singing uh, the song, I feel like going on. See if this blesses you right down to your socks tonight. I feel like going on. Come on, march like soldiers. Pick your feet up. I feel March like a soldier. Those runs only can be done by Carlton Pearson. Wow. He could sing, he, he would get up in my house in the morning and sing in his sleep <laughs> doing, doing church runs. Uh, I feel like going on. I'm going to introduce to you now uh, one of my brothers, the co-founder of the International Communion of Expanding Consciousness. Um, I was one of Carlton Pearson's first sons of inclusion. Uh, arguably, Reverend John Scott is his favorite son of inclusion. We argue back and forth. He loved us both dearly. Uh, Reverend John Scott is doing an amazing work in his spiritual community in St. Petersburg and uh, just walking people into their best and highest good. And uh, Bishop Pearson and I went down for uh, uh, Reverend John's installation uh, at his spiritual community in St. Petersburg. And uh, he loves Carlton Pearson so passionately. I, I think I have a pretty deep love for Carlton D. Pearson. I think John Scott loves him as much as I do. Uh, and so welcome to the show tonight, my brother, Reverend John Scott. Thank you so much for letting me be here this evening. And I, I want to join the others who have said thank you and honor to Julian, to Majesty, to Lady Gina um, for sharing uh, Bishop Pearson with me, sharing him with the world, but sharing him with me. Um, it's not lost on me that your experience is quite different than mine. Uh, but I, I just wanted to share a few moments. One of the things that I loved about um, and still love about Bishop P 
Pearson was his ability to not take himself too seriously. And he would always remind me of that because he would send me a text that was, it was like this prophetic word, this earth shaking prophetic word. And then the next thing you know, he'd send me some kind of an off color joke right behind it. And, and he, would, he would come behind it with one of those special messages that only he could send to remind us to not take ourselves too seriously. Right. But in 2000 or 2001, somewhere around then, there were a few things that he said that shook me to my core. He had the ability to share um, a powerful universal principle and an earth-shaking concept and yet be able to bring that humor in right behind it. But a couple of things that he said that really started me on my own personal journey into inclusion and expanding consciousness, which continues to expand, by the way, is he said, you'll never be free from sin until you know you are free to sin and still be loved by God and advocated by Christ. Wow. When he said that, it was something in me shook because I thought, no, 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 you can't say that because my religious self pushed back against it, the the mind that had been conditioned by uh, three generations, myself, Pentecostal preachers. And I thought, can you really say that? And then I allowed it to resonate with me because there was a vibrational frequency that it struck within my soul. You'll never be free from sin until you know you are free to sin and still be loved by God and advocated by Christ. And then he said something else. He said, belief compelled through fear is not belief at all, but it is Mm. blind and forced obedience. Mm. And as I begin to think on those words today, I was trying to think, you know, about the words that he said, not just the funny jokes, which were fantastic, but the things that shifted my thinking uh, that caused me to do what St. Paul said we all should do to not be conformed to this current age, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Renewing, yep. The things that he said that caused that, that um, we would say in the Pentecostal church called my, caused my baby to jump on the inside of me and to be able to bring forth a new perception, conception, and a reception to uh, the Holy Spirit. Those things that were said to me literally changed my whole life. Um, I became then mentored by him and fathered by him. You know, I was thinking today of all of the people in my life I have, there are two people who call me Jonathan. CDP was one. My mother is another one. But the difference between the two is that my mother only called me Jonathan when I was in trouble. So the first time Bishop Pearson called me Jonathan, I thought I was in trouble until I realized there was a different vibration in his voice when he said it. And he would call me up on the phone and he'd say, Jonathan, how you doing today, son? You get holding on? And he would give me that whole spiel, you know, and then we would end our conversation with saying, keep on keeping on, baby. Those were special moments that I'll never, ever forget. And so as I celebrate Bishop Pearson in my heart, always um, with me, he said when I visited him in Tulsa, the very last time I saw him in person. He said, I'll always be with you. I'll never leave you. No matter what happens to this body, we are connected in our souls irrevocably and eternally. Jonathan, or Johnson, he would call me sometimes, right before we watched the news together, by the way. And then while we were watching the news together, he said, please don't ever watch as much news as I do. There's nothing new on it. (laughs) But he said, I'll never leave you and I'll always be with you. And then I leave you with this quote, another one that shifted my consciousness. Hell was never God's intention, but it was man's invention. My goodness. To control the masses. CDP, I love you. Happy 71st. You feel in the, the love of a son for his spiritual father? It's so genuine. It's, uh, we have cried many tears together, laughed together. And uh, as you can see, this inclusive, expanded, uh, and expand, ever-expanding message is in good hands. It's in good hearts. Maybe even forget the talent, forget the preaching ability. Forget the singing. Uh, yeah, forget the charisma. The people that have been on this show tonight are people of good hearts. And John Scott is a good hearted uh, son of Bishop Carlton Pearson. Thank you, my brother, for being on tonight. I love you to life and I uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks again. Uh, we're going to show one more video. This is kind of this is kind of a behind the scenes video. And then I'm, we're going to bring on to the show Bishop Stephen White. 
Uh, this is just Carlton Pearson in his everyday life. This is what we experienced in our homes with him. He just woke up singing church songs and went to sleep singing church songs. This is Carlton singing some old uh, church hymns in his home. Leave our testify while I have a chance. Oh, yeah, yeah, we got this. Why don't I have a chance? Man, I don't have a chance anymore. Oh. Okay, we're going to get one more. Um, I'm a soldier. We did that last night. Did we do that last night? I'm a soldier. No, we do the soldier. Or right, and in the morning. When I rise in the morning. All the melodies are saying, You don't know what I know. What you done for me? Oh, you don't know what I know. Do you know what I know? Oh, you don't know what I know. Put it in the key. Uh, You can't, and you can't tell it like I can, what he's done for me. So you ought to tell him, yeah, yes, for well, the presence of the Lord is in this place. He, he was with us at all times, singing, tuning up, worshiping the Lord, uh, telling jokes. It just, what, what an irreplaceable um, presence that we got to experience called uh, Carlton Pearson. Bishop Whitestone on, that's okay. So uh, I want to give some uh, some shouts out to some some people who uh, kind of were always behind the scenes, who were uh, the wind beneath uh, Bishop Pearson's wing. Sam, if you're on tonight, thank you everything for you that you have ever done for Carlton Pearson and still helping us uh, to architect inclusion. We love you. We know you're you're continuing to grieve. Nikki, if you're on tonight for years and years, thank you for your love. Thank you for loving our Bishop CDP, Michelle. I couldn't go without saying your name. Obviously, Reverend uh, Mar uh, Marlon Lavenhar, thank you for taking in CDP as you did and for loving him the way that you did. Uh, David Smith, Carlton's uh, music director for probably three decades. Uh, his god brother Rodney, I think, was on tonight. Pierre, thank you for everything that you're doing. Archbishop Bernard Jordan, who was a, a very close friend, uh, Bishop Pearson, his sisters. Uh, who who uh, continue to in their process of grief? His brother, his brother Jangles, who I don't think is on tonight, but we wanted to send you some love, and to Mom Pearson, we love you. We're sending our prayers to you. Someone said tonight, I think it was Julian who said it, and I had this in my notes. The question is not why is CDP gone. The question is why are we still here? We have uh, within us uh, the mantle, the message the mission, the mandate, and now an evolving methodology, how to take this message into uh, the mainstream. I want to encourage you tonight to help me, help me as, uh, as we work together to state uh, the case and to stay the course. It's one thing to say it once. It's another thing to live your life, uh, to, uh, to architect an inclusive, spiritual, global community as we are right now. And so, we are uh, in the process of founding uh, the Carlton Pearson Legacy uh, Foundation that will have both a teaching, uh, a teaching wing, uh, a humanitarian wing, an educational wing. Um, and so it is, it, is, it is the ongoing work of Carlton Pearson that he left for us to do. I want to pull, pull across the screen, if you will, Brandy, the cash app. Uh, this is Bishop Pearson's 71st birthday. I am not really all that anointed to take offerings. I don't do that well at it, especially growing up as a church kid. I've been through a lot of uh, campaign or capital raising uh, um, missions. But I would encourage everyone, if you're on tonight, uh, to consider giving $71. Uh, this is a blessing both to the Carlson Pearson Legacy Foundation. Uh, it's a blessing to his children. It's a blessing to us that continue uh, this mission. Uh, we, we foresee ourselves traveling the globe, uh, setting up inclusive churches and spiritual centers uh, in the name uh, of the legacy of Bishop Carlton Pearson. We are in the process of, of incorporating as a 501c3, and uh, we want to do uh, all that we do to bring honor to this incredible man. And so I'll give you just a minute if you'll take take a moment, uh, take your phone out and uh, pull up that cash app. If you will, give $71 tonight uh, in memory of 71 years of life, of love, of living, uh, of legacy. Um, can, you, can you say yes tonight to the Lord? We say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. We say yes, 
Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree, and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. I heard Bishop Pearson sing that many, many times. Everything is working together for your good. Your steps are ordered by the Lord. Goodness and mercy are following you all the days of your life. You are anointed and appointed for this moment, and the best is yet to come. And I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Bishop Pearson would say every big thing, every little thing, every every known thing, every unknown thing is going to be all right. Yeah, we miss him, but we carry his message, his mandate, his mission uh, within us. And so uh, are you yet holding on? Keep on keeping on, baby. Help us keep this message and this ministry alive. Take a moment, if you will, $71 uh, to the to the cash app. It should be right there on your screen. It is dollar sign New Dimensions 2. And uh, I think we're going to close tonight with an excerpt uh, video again from uh, from Majesty. Did you say Bishop that Bishop Stephen White was on? Was. I'm not seeing him any longer. Okay. I know Bishop White was traveling tonight back and forth. Um, so in support of one of his friends, I think his one of his friends' son was playing in, a, uh, in the actually in the NCAA tournament tonight, and so I think he's uh, still traveling back and forth. Uh, if Bishop White isn't on, we do want to show uh, those who came on late tonight. We showed an excerpt of uh, Majesty Pearson's new song. Uh, it's just such a magical uh, video of seeing Bishop Pearson's image, hearing his voice. He sounds like Mufasa speaking to Simba. That voice is still resonating. It's still vibrating within us. Uh, it is still living inside of us. And so as we carry this voice, this visionary, uh, and it, introducing the world uh, to a bigger and better vision and version of the ultimate reality, that we call God. Uh, we'll show you this. Um, and as we show this video, we're going to say good night to everybody. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow night for Inclusion 101. Take a moment again, if you will. It's uh, dollar sign New Dimensions 2. That's the cash up, $71. I'll ask you if you'll prayerfully consider giving that on Carlton Pearson's birthday. It will certainly help us to carry this message for us. God, we bless all those who give. We bless the giver. We bless you with uh, the fruit of our lips, with our minds. And now we love you with the produce of our hands. God, we thank you that money comes to us and through us as we seek first the kingdom of God. All these things are being added to us. As we exhale, we inhale. As we give, we receive. As we sow, we reap. As we act, the reaction of blessing is flowing to us and through us. God, trust us now with this message, with this mission, with this mandate of carrying this man's uh, lasting legacy to all the world with the good news of the gospel of inclusion in the name and nature of the Christ. Let the church say amen. Amen. We're going to listen now to uh, Majesty Pearson's Always Be. This is her singing uh, to her father. Everything we desire is already within us. You have the power and the energy to create the life you desire in you. You were the first man that I ever loved. God sent me to you a gift from above. See, there's nothing like a father's love. I'm so thankful to the stars above. God gave me to you and you to me If it weren't for you, I wouldn't have this family You raised me up and taught me the ways that I should go And even though you're gone, you promised to never let go Said you always be the best man that I know No matter how far that I go no matter how old that I grow, you know you always be my hero, the best man that I know. No matter how far that I go, no matter how old that I grow, you know you always be my hero. You've always been my hero. You've always been my hero. You've always been my. You always be my number one.
great things You always gave your last You cared in your cup for me Though the days and years may roll I'll never let you go I'll miss you and wish you could be holding me Said you always be the best man that I know No matter how far that I go No matter how old that I go Was that beautiful? Take a big, deep breath, if you will. You know, Bishop would ask us to do this. Wrap your arms around yourself. How can I love a God whom I have not seen if I cannot love myself? I can't love my neighbor until I love myself. Keep on holding on. Keep on keeping on. The best is yet to come. CDP left us prepared, and he left us with each other. We love you, CDP. Happy 71st birthday uh, we're in this thing together. We got this. We're going to walk into this new season, this new dimension, this new iteration of taking this gospel of good news, the gospel of inclusion to all of the global human family. We love you guys. Thanks for joining us tonight for this special birthday celebration of our beloved Carlton D. Pearson. Good night. Go in peace. <laughs>